This is Anna V reporting for Sub FM Student Radio. I'm here with Mel Caldwell, who is the co organiser of the Tauranga TPPA protest march. Hi, Mel. Hi, Zana. How are you? Would you like to introduce yourself to our audience, please, and a bit about where you're from and what's making you do this? Yes, certainly. I am originally from Auckland, though I've lived all over New Zealand, and I settled in Tauranga here in Borderhouse when I came back from the UK hmm, about 12 years ago. I consider myself a local here now, and I'm quite concerned about local and national events as well, and being part of them, as well as what's happening for our country at the moment. So the TPPA is quite a big issue that I think needs to be a lot more transparent. So Mel, what was your role in, in the organising of the Tauranga March? I am often involved in protests here uh, locally and I've been protesting since I was 16 actually. So I'm quite active in standing up for our rights and the Tauranga March I fell into as a co-organiser because the main organiser was not going to be attending. So I said, oh, well, I'll take over, and um, that was quite short notice, but that's okay. So a couple of us, uh, myself and a lady called Peter, took over and picked up from where he left off and got ourselves organised within about three days. Were you pleased with the turnout on the day? Ye yes, yes, we were. It was a good turnout for Tauranga, sure. But you always hope that more people will come to something, which is such a huge issue and affecting everyone in New Zealand. So how many people did you think turned out on the day? Well, some people came early and left and others came late, so I would say overall maybe 400. 400, wow, mm. that is good mm. turnout. That is very good turnout. We you obviously were pleased with the turnout. Yes, yes. Okay. Though there were quite a few people I thought in my circles that might have gone and they didn't, which was a shame. Because it will be impacting on them and they don't seem to realise the implications of the TPPA agreement. How were you recruiting people to come to the march and notifying them of it? Basically social media. Like Facebook? Yes. Twitter? Yep. No, I don't use Twitter. Mm. But anything like this where you can get it out into the social media and get people to spread it, obviously is going to improve the advertising of it and the notification. But unfortunately the nature of the TPPA being secret, the mainstream media would not cover it and there was a very small thing on TV3 about it. I myself believe that obviously that's part of the agenda to keep it under cloak and dagger. So the more people that we can get the information out to about what we do know about it, the better. So currently you've got a Facebook page, is that correct? Yes we do, we have the event page that is still running even though the event has passed so we continue to upload information on that. Uh, yes, that is relevant to the TPPA, but also other issues that may come up. How can people find your Facebook page if they're interested in participating? It is called the International Day Against the TPPA, Tauranga. There's, I think, maybe 16 event pages, so you'd have to find specifically the Tauranga one if you wanted to follow us. But, of course, all the other events had their own people running those pages, and so they were sharing all sorts of information. The It's Our Future website is probably the main one to go to. Then they also have a Facebook page, and they share a lot of new information that's coming to light through WikiLeaks and various other sources. So they've got links to the local Tauranga page, if people can find out them ways to Yes, they should do, yeah. Okay. So what was your impression of the mood of the crowd on the day? Very concerned about where we are heading and that we don't really know anything about the TPPA really mm -hmm. and they want to know more, they want it to be more transparent. There's a lot of people that have heard the snippets of information that have been released but I think really people just want to know more about what's, what it entails and how it's going to affect on the average Kiwi. The people here, how many people did you get to sign the petition? Oh, I think last count was maybe 280 maybe. Mm. Okay. Right, so you've already covered some of this, but can you just give an overview for listeners who are not familiar with what the TPPA is and what does it stand for and why should we be concerned? Sure. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which is somewhat of a misnomer because 
it's not really a partnership and it's not really an agreement when it's being negotiated in secret and it, the repercussions for the average citizen of each of the 12 countries involved is uh, well un unknown and unquantifiable at this stage. So our main concern is the lack of transparency around it. What will happen though is that New Zealand will basically be owned by corporate America. Corporate America will be able to make decisions on our products and our services in our country. Any disputes will be resolved in a private court in the United States and our laws will be rewritten by a court in the United States and even our MPs here in New Zealand won't know where those laws are coming from and who's written them. Once the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement is signed, there is a clause in it where the main country, i.e. the United States, or any other country that has leverage will be able to change any term within the agreement, even after it's signed. So this is a very movable goalpost. The other issue that we have is that once it's signed, it will be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for any future governments to undo and to remove ourselves from. That sounds really serious. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Mel, have you got any upcoming events to keep up the pressure on the government? We have actually started a committee of concerned locals. I'm not sure what else is happening around the country at the moment, but we are going to keep the pressure on. I'm wanting John Campbell to actually do an expose on it. And the office of John Campbell did reply to me and confirm that they were going to do a story that was probably three months ago. So I'm going to continue to comment on that confirmation and pressure him into bringing this to the mainstream media and out to the greater New Zealand public. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mel. It's been great interviewing you. My and pleasure. And this is Zana V from Sub-FM.